Hey everyone, I'm Tam Sparrow, writer and homeschooling mom, and today I'm going to tell you all about the basics of story structure. Story has always been an important part of human culture. Now, we could sit here and debate the hows and whys of this all night, but that is not the point of this video. The point is this. No matter where you go in the world, that country, that city, has its own stories going back for thousands and thousands of years. From mythology to fairy tales, people have been using stories to share messages and explain the unknown for as long as we've been around. For as long as we've been telling stories, those stories have all shared the same basic structure. Now, we all know that every story has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Saying, I went to the store yesterday, is not a story. It's a statement of fact. I went to the store yesterday and I met a man who asked me out on a date. Well, that's not a story either. We have the beginning and we have the middle, but there's no ending. There's no satisfying resolution to this story. I went to the store yesterday. I met a man who asked me out on a date. I told him no, and I went home. While this isn't particularly engaging, it is a complete story with a beginning, a middle, and an ending. If it were that simple, however, I wouldn't be wasting your time with this video. I started here because those three elements, the beginning, the middle, and the end, are what lead into the basic three-act structure. And we can trace this idea at least as far back as ancient Greece. The concept, I'm sure, has been around at some level for as long as we've been telling stories. However, as far as I can tell, the Greek philosopher Aristotle was the first one to put this concept into writing. In his poetics, Aristotle talks about the foundations of story structure, and in it, he breaks the story down into three separate parts. Basically, he says what I've already told you, that every story must have a beginning, a middle, and an end. But he adds that these three parts must also be linked, meaning that one part has to lead in to the next because anyone who has been around children for any length of time can tell you that it is very difficult to follow a story that jumps around from place to place. Mommy, I went fishing with Daddy and, and we went to get Burger King. Oh, and I caught a really big fish and I had chicken nuggets. This is how he breaks this down into three acts. Act one, Protassus. This is the introduction where we are shown the setting and meet the characters. Act 2, Epitasis. In this act, the main character faces a series of increasingly difficult trials which build towards the climax. Act 3, Catastrophe. This is the final act. The main character overcomes the trials, any loose plot threads are tied up, and we see how the world or the character has been left changed in some way. I also want to mention that Aristotle also said that the story should be long enough to cover these three parts, but otherwise its length is left up to the tastes of the audience. This idea can also be seen in the Japanese concept of Joha Kyo. An idea that started in the no theater and, to my understanding, has spread so much into the culture that it is seen as a way of life. Joha Kyo is both the same as and different from the concept of beginning, middle, end. Jo means beginning or opening. Ha means break or development, and Kyo can be translated to mean fast or climax. When this is applied to a story, it means that things start off slow and then smoothly and gradually 
speed up to a climax. This structure is so ingrained into a story that it can be seen at every level. Each act, each scene, each speech, and even each character's movements have their own Joha Kyo. It's actually a really cool concept, and if you're interested, I would definitely encourage you to read more about it. But back to Greece and Aristotle. If you go back and look at popular novels or movies, you will see that pretty much all of them follow this basic three-act structure. You have the normal state before something happens that shakes everything up, the thing that happens that shakes everything up and has to be dealt with, and then the aftermath of whatever has happened. Let's look at Star Wars as an example. You could argue that each set of three movies is its own three-act structure, but for this example, I want to focus in on A New Hope. Act 1. In this act, we meet Luke Skywalker, a young man who wants nothing more than to become a pilot and leave the farm where he lives with his aunt and uncle. Luke and his uncle buy two droids from the Jawa. These droids inform Luke that they have an important message from Princess Leia, a member of the Rebellion. Luke takes them to Ben Kenobi, and his aunt and uncle are killed. Act 2. Here we see things start to happen. The trials of increasing difficulty. Luke and Ben head to Moss Eisley where they have to convince Han Solo to help them rescue the princess. They save her, but Ben is killed. The evil empire tracks their ship back to the rebel base. Act 3. Now we have the climactic moment and tie up any loose ends. The Empire has brought its super weapon, the Death Star, to the Rebel base, intending to destroy the Rebellion once and for all. Luke overcomes his doubts and destroys the Death Star, with some help from Han Solo, of course. Han and Luke are awarded medals for their heroic actions. The end. What you can take away from this is that it's the conflict, the big something that happens, that drives the story forward. It's what causes our main character to leave their everyday life behind, by choice or by force, and it's what creates the series of increasingly difficult trials. Now, in the 18th century, a German novelist by the name of Gustav Freytag expanded on this idea. Freytag analyzed the structure of Shakespeare's plays, and it was this analysis that gave us Freytag's Pyramid, a tool that is still taught to this day. It breaks the structure down like this. Exposition. The beginning of the story, showing the setting and introducing the characters. This usually ends with the inciting incident. Rising action. Tension is created by raising the stakes. This is where we see the increasingly difficult trials that the main character has to overcome. Climax. This is the highest point of tension with the major conflict. Falling action. This section is where the main character usually has to deal with the aftermath of the climax. Loose ends are tied up as we move towards the conclusion. Resolution. The final moments of the story where we see what has or hasn't changed. Just a quick note, I have seen both the falling action and the resolution referred to as the denouement, which is why I didn't list it here. Now, this kind of makes it sound like the climax always has to be in the middle of the story, but this is not the case. Technically, you can spend as much or as little time on each of these parts as you want to. It just depends on the pacing of your story. A tragedy or drama, for example, might have the climax more towards the middle, whereas an action story is probably going to have the climax a lot closer towards the end. This is how Freytag's Pyramid might fit into the three-act structure. Act 1. Exposition leading to the inciting incident. Act 2. Rising action and climax. Act 3. Falling action and resolution. Again, 
How long you spend on each section entirely depends on your pacing and the type of story you want to tell. The advice I've seen the most, however, is that the majority of your story is in Act 2, because this is where most of the action happens, and that's what's going to keep your reader engaged. To clarify, since this video is supposed to be about the basics of story structure, Freytag's Pyramid is made up of those basics. It's the beginning, middle, and end clarified. The majority of stories have the exposition, inciting incident, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. Okay, that's all I have for you today. I feel like that was a lot, but I hope that it was informative for you. If you have any questions or a suggestion for a topic you'd like to see me cover in a video, you can let me know in the comments down below. Or, as always, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. And if you want to see more, then don't forget to subscribe. I post new videos on Sundays. See you next time. However, as far as I can tell, ugh. however, as far as the okay, I can I can do this. I'm gonna get it. However, as far as I can tell, er, the I keep forgetting Luke Skywalker, a young man who the Luke Skywalker, a young man who wants nothing more than to become a fight. The Luke Skywalker. A young man who wants nothing more than to become a pilot. Bleh. And it's what bleh. It's what causes our main character to leave their ordinary life behind by choice. Bleh. Don't you fall asleep over there. If you start snoring in my video, I'm gonna smack you with a book. <laughs>